Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, so uh, moving on to a new topic, we're going to have a look at complex numbers. And the first question I'm going to do, which is, is the one from 2016, okay? Um, it's, it's a nice, I suppose, introduction to the, to, to the chapter. Um, so this was question one from paper one, so worth 25 marks. The first part said minus four plus three i is one root of the equation az squared plus bz plus c is equal to zero, where a, b and c are real numbers and i squared is equal to minus one write the other root. Okay, so first things first. Um, the other root is minus four minus three i. Okay, so it didn't say calculate, it didn't say work out, it didn't say verify, nothing like that. It said just write the other root. Okay, so what am I doing here? This is what's called the conjugate of minus four plus three i, which is the root they gave us in the question. Okay, and the fact that I've done this is the conjugate roots theorem. Okay, it is governed by that theorem. What is that theorem? Okay, well, it only applies when it tells you that the coefficients in the quadratic are real numbers. If I go to the log tables, and it just happened to be open on the right page, so 23, um, you can see all your number sets. So you have your natural numbers, your natural numbers are part of the integer set, the integers and natural numbers are part of your rational numbers because any whole number can be written as a fraction, and then the rational and irrational numbers both make up the set of real numbers. However, sitting outside of them, though, is the set of complex numbers. So a complex number is not real. So what is a complex number? Well, it is the solutions to a quadratic that never actually cut through the x-axis, OK? And because they don't cut through that x-axis, you never get solutions where x is equal to a value, okay? Never cuts through that x-axis, so that's why it has no real roots, okay? That's what that means. And of course, the quadratic could be in any one of the quadrants, but either way, it floats above or below that x-axis and it never cuts through it, okay? So that's your complex numbers. When you multiply a, a complex number by its conjugate, what ends up happening is the all the i's cancel. So what I'm doing is multiplying this out now. Okay, so minus 12i plus 12i cancel and i squared, because i squared is a minus one, anything with i squared in it ends up um, resolving down to a real number. Okay, as you get 16 plus 9 is 25. Um, so all I'm basically showing you is, is, is not the quadratic here because I would have had to let x equal to all of these. What I'm basically showing you is the fact that the i's will cancel. Okay, and the i squareds are real numbers. So for as long as they tell you that the coefficients are real, you can use the con conjugate roots theorem and just literally write down the other root. Okay, when can you not do it? Well, I'm just going to flick on to part C of this particular question. Can you see in this question that the coefficients are not all real? That's real, it's a one, that is not real. Okay, so the conjugate roots theorem does not apply in this question. B is not real and C is not real. They've got I's in them. They are complex numbers and they fall outside of the real numbers set. Okay, so that was part A. Part B then says use De Morvis theorem to express one plus I to the power of eight in its simplest form. Okay, um, 
let, let me explain first why we need De Morvis theorem. So if I was to work this out using, this is called um, rectangular form is, is one name for it. It could also be called Cartesian form. Um, if I was to work him out the long way or, or in rectangular form as it's written there now, I would have to do this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, that is one plus i to the power of eight. OK, and you do two brackets at a time, maybe two more and two more and two more and then start multiplying the answers by each other. OK, so you can see there's a lot of computation to it. So De Marvis theorem was invented to get around computation of complex numbers. I just need to find it. I can't remember where it is. Feels like I've gone too far. Let me go back. It is in the log tables here. Okay, so De Marvis theorem is really, really useful for computation. And by computation, I mean um, multiplying complex numbers, dividing complex numbers, uh, doing complex numbers to a power, or being given a power and having to find the roots. Okay, De Marvis theorem comes out on its own whenever you have to do any of that computation. The one caveat with De Marvis theorem though, is it must be in polar form, not the rectangular form that I showed you on the last page. It must be in polar form to be able to uh, use De Marvis theorem. Okay, so polar form is nothing more than looking for my unit circle, okay? Any point, any point at all can be written using polar form, okay? So you see that point one zero there on the, um, on the, on the unit circle or on the X axis, okay? Um, what is my angle at this point here, okay? Well, you always start your angle from what's called the positive sense of the x-axis. So if you're here on the x-axis, your angle is zero, okay? So how did this point come about? Well, it was cos zero degrees. So if you put that into a calculator, you'll see you get one and sine zero degrees, okay? And you'll see you'll get the zero. So you remember it as Christian name, surname. So cos comes before sine. So any point on in, in, in the plane can be represented either as, as a set of points, one, zero, or as a, a set of trig functions, okay? Cos of an angle, sine of an angle. You need two pieces of information for it. You need how far are you out from the, from zero, zero, from the origin. OK, and you need to know the angle that you've traveled through from the x axis. OK, so, for example, how did I get this point over here? Well, the angle that I've traveled through is 180 degrees. OK, so again, cos 180 degrees and you can put this into your calculator if you wish, sine 180 degrees. And I would hope that you get one zero. OK. Um, Remember I mentioned radius? Well, this is the unit circle, okay? So my radius is one. So actually one sits outside this bracket here. Um, so that's why I suppose it looks like I don't have a radius, but I do, I have a radius of one, okay? And it's this concept of Christian name, surname, as I call it, this concept of polar form that we use for De Marva's theorem. OK, so what do you need? You need how far are you out from the origin and what angle have you gone through? And all you're literally doing is rewriting points in a different format. OK, and it saves all this work. And you'll see just in a, in a minute uh, how much better polar form is. OK, so one plus um, one plus I to the power of, of to the power of eight, okay? Let me just change to black and, and I'm gonna leave the purple there for now just to 
I suppose to remind you how how painful that would be to work out. OK, so what I tend to do is figure out what quadrant am I in with one plus I. So I'm coming over, I'm coming over one and I'm going up one. So just a general plot to represent one plus I. So I know my angle is somewhere now between naught and 90 degrees. So I'm in the first quadrant. So your to work out the the um, distance out from the origin, it is nothing more than the Pythagoras' theorem. OK, so I have gone out here on my x axis. I've gone out one, one unit. OK, and I've gone up one unit. I've gone up to one plus I. OK, so I use Pythagoras' theorem where the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. OK, so that radius that we work out is the square root of uh, one squared plus one squared. OK, um, and you'll see formulas. It could be a squared plus b squared, where your complex number is equal to uh, a plus b i. Or, of course, they could use x plus y. It just depends on how they do it. And if they use x plus y, that will be x squared plus y squared. But it is just Pythagoras' theorem. Um, so square root of one squared plus one squared is root two. OK, now, how do I figure out the angle? OK, well, the angle is made with the positive sense of the x axis. OK, let me just make that a bit thinner so you might be able to see it. OK, so basically my angle starts here and it's what angle do I have to go through to get to what I have just drawn there as my hypotenuse. OK, and it's tan, so it's, it's opposite over adjacent. OK. Um, so tan inverse in my case, one over one. OK. Um, but it is opposite over adjacent, so it's always the y part over the x part. Um, Maybe I'll change these to x squared plus y squared so it types in with the with the axis. Okay, um, so tan inverse of one over one. Where is my calculator? Um, does it say degrees or radians? It doesn't say. So 45 degrees or uh, what's that pi over four if you're in radians. OK, so therefore, using De Marva's theorem now. OK, your x plus yi is equal to r times cos theta plus i sine theta. OK, now what's shown in the log tables is when you're doing it to a power. But embedded in the center of it, in between those square brackets, is polar form. So if you forget what polar form is like, it is it is written there with De Marvel's theorem. OK, so basically I can rewrite 1 plus i as root 2. So that's my or. And then I'm going to go bracket cos theta plus i sine 45 degrees. OK, so that's one plus I in polar form. And only then, only when it's in polar form, can I apply the power. OK, so what I would do then is therefore one plus I to the power of eight is root two cos 45 degrees plus I sine 45 degrees to the power of eight. OK, and what De Marvis theorem tells you is when when you work out the power, it's the radius to the power. The power times the angle. OK, so the radius times the power, the power times the angle. OK, so for our one here, it's root two to the power of eight. 
So it's the radius to the power and then it's the power times the angle plus I sine. Well, how about I do it like that? Eight multiplied by 45 degrees, I sine eight by 45 degrees. And it doesn't matter how you really write that out. Okay, and I need the brackets around it. So let's work him out, root two. Uh, come outside the square root sign, go to the power of eight, and I have 16 for that. And then cos eight by 45 degrees is 360 degrees, plus I sine 360 degrees. Okay, um, in its simplest form then, typically means bring it back to rectangular form. Okay, so how will I do that? How do I bring it back to this form here? Well, you just multiply it in. So you do 16 cos 360 on your calculator. So 16 cos 360, and you can see for that I get 16. And the next part I do is 16 sine 360, okay? So I have an I here, so 16 sine 360, and I get um, zero for that. So in its simplest form, the answer to this one is in fact 16. Okay, isn't that far easier than having to try and work that out and remember where you are? So that is the real power of De Marvis theorem. Write it in polar form using the two formulas to work out the radius and the angle and then apply De Marvis theorem. Okay, part C. One plus I is a root of the equation X squared plus bracket minus two plus I Z plus three minus I is equal to zero. Find its other root in the form N M plus N I, where M and N are real numbers. And of course, I squared is equal to minus one. OK, so there's lots of ways to do this. OK, um, it's a quadratic. I'm going to start off doing it with um, the minus B formula, because that's how I would do any other quadratic where I couldn't see the factors. So A is one. B is equal to minus two plus I. C is equal to three minus I. OK, I hope that makes sense. So x or z is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in R1, it is equal to minus b, so minus minus 2 plus i plus or minus the square root of minus 2 plus i squared minus 4ac all over 2a. OK, I left out the A of 1 here because I ran out of space. Right, so let's work him out. So let's ripple through that minus here. So I have minus minus 2 is 2. And I have minus plus I is minus I. Plus or minus the square root of. Um, so minus 2 plus I by minus 2 plus I is 4 minus 2i minus 2i plus i squared or 4 I probably should have left more room 4 minus 4i and then the plus i squared here becomes minus 1 so it's equal to 3 minus 4i let's work through this minus 4 here so minus 4 by 3 is minus 12 minus four by minus i is plus four i. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and I didn't go too fast with that. All over two ones are two. Okay, so let's tidy it up. We have still got two minus i on the outside, plus or minus the square root of minus four i plus four i is canceling. I have three minus 12, it gives me minus nine, all over two. 
Okay, now this square root of minus nine, if you put that into a calculator, you of course get a, a maths error. And this was the whole reason complex numbers was invented. Okay, so the square root of minus nine can be written as the square root of nine times minus one. Okay, square root of nine is three, square root of minus one is I, okay? So therefore, I can write him as two minus I plus or minus three I all over two. That's where I worked him out. Okay, and then you split it like you would any other one. So on the top, I have two minus I plus three I over two. And in the bottom, I have two minus I minus three I all over two. So here to tidy up, I have two, two is the only real number. Minus I plus three I is plus two I over two. And here I have two is again, the only real number minus four I all over two. And when it's all over two, you divide it into both bits. You divide it into the real and the imaginary bit so that you end up with one plus I here and you end up with one minus two I for this one. Okay, um, we have one plus I, they gave it to us. So find the other root, one minus two I. Okay, so that is a perfectly acceptable way to do um, find the other root. You could do it by equating the coefficients, for example. Um, sorry, I'm going to share. See if we can equate the coefficients and get the same thing. So um, you can also do some of the roots and product of the roots and um, solve it that way. That's perfectly acceptable way of doing it. You can do long division. Okay. So to do long division. So if one of your roots uh, Z is equal to one plus I, okay. Therefore the factor is Z minus one minus I. Okay. And that's what you long divide in when you're doing it. Okay. Let me give it a bash. Definitely looking for trouble here now, thinking this is going to work out, knowing the mistakes I make. Right, I'm going to multiply this out. Um, and it's a bit of a guess as to whether it's easier to multiply out or easier to leave as it is, okay? So I'm going to multiply it out. I may end up bringing it back together again. And if I do, I do. Okay, plus three minus I. Okay, and I'm long dividing into that Z minus one minus I. So what must I multiply by Z to bring it up to Z squares? Well, one more Z. Okay, and then I multiply Z by everything on the outside. So Z by Z is Z squared. Z by minus one is minus one Z. Z by minus I is minus I Z. Okay, put a line under it, change the sign, change the sign, change the sign, um, and get our Z squares to cancel. So I have minus two Z plus one Z is minus one Z. And I have plus I Z plus I Z is plus two I Z. And of course I have plus three minus I. Um, M, 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 M. So this is an example now where it's probably easier to factor out the Z here so that I know what to multiply by Z to cancel the Z's. Because remember what we do, we cancel the Z squares first, then we cancel the Z's and then the numbers. Okay, so let's factor him. So I have Z times minus one plus two I. Okay, um, so what must I multiply by Z to give me this? Well, I obviously have minus one plus two I. Okay, and I'm just gonna put it in a bracket up the top so that I can see that that has to be multiplied by each bit out here. Okay, so let's do that. 
minus one plus two i. Well, I know I'm going to get this one, so I'm just going to write it down. Now it gets a little bit harder now for multiplying it. Let me show you what I'm doing, multiplying this by this for the next part. So minus one by minus one is one. Minus one by minus i is minus i. Plus two i by minus one is minus two i. Plus two i by minus i is minus two i squared. Okay, change the sign, change the sign, change the sign, change the sign, change the sign. Put a line under. You know, for sure you're going to cancel. Okay, so now I must take into account plus three minus i and these ones here. Huh. Okay, let me tidy up this first. So I have plus one minus three i and then minus two times minus one. So I have plus one minus three i plus two. So I end up with three minus three i. Okay, and I didn't need any of my new signs. That's a minus. Plus three i. I think I've made a mistake somewhere where I should have minus i because I can see that the threes are canceling. And I would expect the i's to cancel as well. Okay. So I've made some little mistake in there anyway, but um, I knew that was going to happen because that's me and long division all over. Um, that's how you do it. The most important bit is to make sure that you write it as a factor. Feel free to, um, to send it on to me if you manage to work it out. The other way I prefer to do it is equating coefficients. So again, if I go back to copy the, 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 the question, Okay, you can um, equate the coefficients. So in other words, if I take this root that they've given me and I take another root, m plus ni, okay, and when I multiply them together, I should get the bit at the end, okay? Or if we do old fashioned um, equating the coefficients, I can say that's root one, that's root two, okay? Bring over and form your factors, bring over and form your factors, then multiply your factors by each other, And that should be equal to x squared plus minus two plus i z plus three minus i. Okay, so in other words, when you multiply factors together, it, you will get this. Okay, and it always looks worse than it actually is. So let's multiply this side out. You end up with x, z by z is z squared z by minus m is minus mz, z by minus ni. Then let's multiply minus one by them all. I'll have minus z plus m plus ni. And then multiply the minus i by everything, minus iz minus im plus ni squared. Okay. You tidy this up, you let the z squares equal the z squares and you can see that they're going to cancel. You then factor out all the z's along the way and then let these two equal to each other. And whatever m and n you get here will be equal to minus two plus i. And then all of these terms that are on their own with no z's in them will be equal to three minus i. 
Okay, so that's where I'm going with this. So z squared, let's factor the z's together. So I have plus z times minus m minus one minus i. Okay, and then let's write down everything else. I have plus m plus ni minus im. He's minus one. So he's going to be a minus n. Okay, so then you equate coefficients. So what do I mean by that? I know that this equals this. Okay, why? Well, when you multiply the factors and you get your quadratic, the only way the, the left can equal the right is when the z squares equal each other, when the z terms equal each other, and when the numbers on their own equal each other, okay? Because remember, mathematicians often think as this is the balance sign. So the only way the left balances with the right is when the coefficients in front of the letters match each other, okay? Which means that you can write down then that minus m minus one minus i is actually equal to minus two plus i. Okay, and you can also write down that m plus n i minus i m minus n is equal to three minus i. Okay, and you can solve it then for m here. So if I've minus m is equal to minus two plus i, bring over these two, plus one plus i, so I have minus one plus two i, that's minus m, change the signs all the way across, minus one minus two i, and then try this one. Sub in for your m, for your one minus two i. So one minus two i for my m, plus n i, minus i times, I'm subbing in for my m again, minus n is equal to three minus i. Okay, so one minus two i plus n i minus i plus two i squared minus n is equal to three minus i. Okay, and I know when I bring that all to one side, I'm going to get one plus i. Okay, I'm just not gonna waste your time and finish it um, because I know I've got my answer there, which is one minus two i. Okay, so that's how you equate the coefficients. You can do it in algebra for um, a, a cubic equation is, is, the easy, is, is the most common one to do it for, but of course you can do it for complex numbers. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.